do we know when PEMDAS applies? When is it the right thing to think about when you're doing a math problem? What kinds of problems do we solve using PEMDAS? So anytime we're solving a problem, let me, let me rephrase that. Anytime we're working on a problem that involves these operations of arithmetic, so parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction, PEMDAS has a chance at being a valuable tool, right? Um, the, t the problems you just worked on the exam involved those operations of arithmetic. Mm, okay, anyone have any? Let's think about an algebraic expression. Let me just write down one uh, that has a variable in it. Let's say 3x minus 6x squared or something like that. So here's an example of an expression. And if I think about how this expression is put together according to the order of operations, so if I'm going to, just as an example, if I'm going to evaluate this expression for a specific value of x, let's say I pick a value like x equals 2 or something like that, then I would just carry that through in the way that we always do right, by putting that 2 into place where the x's were using some parentheses. And then I would just follow through the various operations according to PEMDAS to simplify this and get it down to be as simple as possible. And so what I like to do, I, I have kind of a stubborn visual learning preference myself, so I like to draw little pictures uh, that illustrate the concepts of what the order of operations is really telling us here. Um, what would be the first part of this expression that we would evaluate if we're following the order of operations? The exponent. So the first thing I would do is I would square what? I would square the 2, right? The order of operations tells us that this exponent applies to that 2. It doesn't apply to the 6, which is in front of it and connected by what hidden operation here? Multiplication. All right, so there's a secret multiplication sign that we're not writing. But that means that, yes, the exponent applies to the 2. So here's how I'm going to diagram that out. I'm going to imagine that there's a 2 in here. And that the first thing that's happening to that 2, I'm going to put it in a little box, like we're wrapping it up in a box. And that box is the squaring operation. I'm going to kind of write that with a little exponent of 2 in here. Maybe I'll, or maybe I'll just write the word. I'm just going to write the word squared. A little box around the 2. So that's the first thing. If I'm, if I'm 2 in this equation, the first thing that's happening to me is I'm getting squared. And then what's happening to me after I get squared? I'm being multiplied by 6. So I'm going to wrap that box in another box. And so around that squaring box, I'm going to wrap it in a multiplication by 6 box. Let's write that out, times 6. And then somewhere else, in a separate box, I have another copy of that 2. And what's happening in the other box over here? It's being multiplied by 3. So I'm going to put yet another box around this 2, and that's, we'll just call that the times 3 box. And so those two things are kind of happening separately from one another. And then at the very end of the day, what do we end up doing? Subtract. The one thing we haven't done yet here is subtract, right. And so if we look at how this, whoops, if we look at how this expression is put together, how it's built, it's built according to the order of operations. With the operations that happen first, kind of the innermost here, right? The exponent happens, then we multiply by 6. Over here, then we multiply this by 3. And only at the very end of that process do we end up doing any subtraction. So this is, the, this is pictorially kind of how this, how this expression is put together. Um, and that's how, that's how PEMDAS works. That's why PEMDAS is a completely appropriate thing to use here, because it tells us how this expression is built. So PEMDAS tells us how to construct an expression. But what if I want to deconstruct? expression? What if I want to take this apart? So let me think about why we would want to do that for a minute. Uh, maybe instead of trying to evaluate this expression for a specific value of x, maybe the value of x that, uh, that I want in this expression is a value that we don't even know yet. Maybe x is actually an unknown quantity. And if x is actually an unknown quantity, let me replace this 2s by x's for a second. If x is really an unknown quantity, uh, 
then this picture down here still tells me how this expression is put together. But if I don't know what value x takes, and there's some reason for me to believe that the value of x is a specific value, so um, I'm probably going to screw this up if I just take a guess. Let me just put a 5 here or something like that. Let's suppose that all that I know about x is that when I build the expression 3x minus 6x squared using the order of operations, that that result comes out to be a specific value like 5. I should, and I would like to, be able to use that information to take this expression apart and peel it off layer by layer to get to the value of x. So PEMDAS is all about constructing an expression, which is what we do when we evaluate and simplify. But when we're doing the opposite, this is when we'll use the specific word that I think gets overused in the minds of, of people doing math in math classes, and that's the word solve. What does it mean to solve this equation. What should our answer look like at the end of the day? What does it mean to solve? What is that? What's our burden of proof? Very often algebra teachers will finish the sentence up here by not just saying solve, but they'll say something like solve for x. And so whatsoever that process might look like, and that's really about half to two-thirds of what we're going to talk about together this semester, whatever that process looks like, we know what the product at the end of that process needs to be. It needs to be something that tells me a value for x. So solve has a very specific meaning in an algebra class. It means to find a value, possibly more than one, but at least find a value of x, which makes this equation true. Right. So the end product is a specific value of x, we hope. x equals some number. And whatever that specific value of x is, it should have the property that when this expression is evaluated at that number, that that expression comes out to be 5. That's what it means to solve an equation. So often solve takes on this generic meaning. We might think any time we're doing a math problem, we're really solving. Mm, yeah, that's kind of true. We're solving the problem. But when we're talking about equations and algebra, solve is only used in this way. At least I am going to make a concerted effort to only use it in this way so that you know what your answer needs to look like at the end of that problem. It needs to tell me x equals this. That's how I'll know that I have done a task that involves solving. But because that task involves us finding a value for x, it's going to involve us unwrapping the arithmetic that surrounds the x's in that expression. In other words, I'm not constructing that expression anymore. I'm deconstructing it. I'm taking this package that has several layers of wrapping paper on the outside, and I'm unwrapping that package. And when I unwrap the package, what's the first thing I need to unwrap? <coughs> first thing I would need to unwrap is the outermost layer. Right? I'm not going to get to that x unless I first unwrap the outermost layer of wrapping paper, which in this case is subtraction. Right? And so when I'm solving an equation, so let's go back to our original prompt here. We'll use PEMDAS when we're constructing or when we're evaluating or when we're simplifying an expression. Evaluate or simplify. But when we're solving, when we're unwrapping a variable. We're not going to do PEMDAS. We're going to do these operations in exactly the opposite order. We'll worry about subtraction and addition first, because that's the first layer on the outside of the wrapping paper of an expression that was built with the order of operations. And only after subtraction and addition have exhausted themselves, then we'll worry about division and multiplication. And only after all the division and multiplication are done with, then we'll worry about the exponents, if there are any. And then the P at the bottom of this one tells us that when we do this work of unwrapping variables, instead of the original order of operations, which tells us to work from the inside of parentheses out, when we solve for a variable in an expression that has parentheses in it, we're actually going to use the parentheses reversely. We're going to go from the outside in. And so PEMDAS, when we're solving for a variable, becomes SADMEP. Inside out becomes outside in. 
And so which of these you use, which of these to keep in mind, really depends on the task that you're given. If your goal is to find a value for x by unwrapping the arithmetic, then the order of operations should be used backwards. Worry about adding and subtracting first, then worry about dividing and multiplying, then worry about exponents, and work your parentheses from the outside in. 